time for some more lockdown embryology with me, Alice Roberts. We're staying with the digestive system in this video, but looking in detail at some of the organs that develop in the abdomen. Most of them are organs of the digestive system, but one of them isn't, although it's closely related to them anatomically. So I'm just drawing the bottom half of a developing embryo here, and you can see where the foregut is bulging to form the stomach, and you've got the primary intestinal loop of the midgut as well, which starts to form in the fifth week of development. And just in front of the stomach there, you've got septum transversum, the major contributor to the diaphragm, but also it continues as a sheet of tissue below that, stretching from the stomach to the anterior abdominal wall. So all of the gut has a mesentery which connects it to the back wall of the abdomen, so a dorsal mesentery, but the stomach has this additional ventral mesentery formed out of the lower part of septum transversum. There's the aorta, which lies in the posterior abdominal wall behind that dorsal mesentery, and blood vessels are going to reach out to the gut through the dorsal mesentery. So the mesentery conveys those blood vessels out from the aorta. We've got the celiac artery supplying the foregut in the abdomen, the superior mesenteric artery supplying the midgut, and the inferior mesenteric artery supplying the hindgut. And those arteries are going to stick around into adulthood and they're going to be supplying all of the derivatives from those embryonic parts of the primitive gut tube. The gut tube has already started to bud at this point as well. So you can see just below the stomach there are several buds appearing. One of them is growing up into septum transversum and this is the liver bud and so this is made of endoderm like the gut tube and it's going to branch and branch and branch until it forms the biliary tree of the liver. So many of the cells inside the liver including the hepatocytes and then the lining of the whole biliary tree are from endoderm. Whereas connective tissue cells and blood vessels and the specialist blood making cells in the fetal liver come from mesoderm. As that liver forms within septum transversum, it divides up the ventral mesogastrium into two portions. It divides it up into a portion which then stretches from the liver to the anterior abdominal wall, which is called the falciform ligament. And that's because in an adult it's sickle shaped, falx means sickle. You can see the diaphragm up there, that's the upper part of septum transversum. And then the portion of the ventral mesogastrium stretching from the liver to the stomach is the lesser omentum. Bit of a strange word, it means apron. And then there's still the dorsal mesogastrium stretching from the stomach to the posterior abdominal wall. I'm just going to draw a section of this abdomen then, including some of the organs that we've just been looking at in 3D. So what we've got here is a portion of the body wall, that's the cylinder that's cut into here, and the hole in the middle is essentially here, the abdominal cavity, the peritoneal cavity. There's the stomach with the membrane stretching to the front of it, so to the left, the ventral mesogastrium, and behind it to the right, the dorsal mesogastrium. Here's the liver, which is growing up into that ventral mesogastrium, dividing it into falciform ligament and lesser omentum. And we've also got an organ developing in the dorsal mesogastrium, so just behind the stomach there. This organ isn't part of the digestive system. It's developing out of that mesoderm, but it stays very closely associated with all these other organs, and that is the spleen. So now I'm going to label up what we've got here. There's the spleen. So that's lying within the dorsal mesogastrium, the dorsal mesentery of the stomach. There's the stomach itself and there's the, the more solid liver in front of it. FL, that stands for falciform ligament. LO, lesser omentum, stretching between the liver and the stomach. And you can see that there are a couple of other buds just below the liver too. Oh, and the gallbladder also buds off as part of the liver bud. Now I want to look at what happens as the stomach continues to grow and change shape. 
and what happens to the membranes that are attached to it. So it grows like a banana, it grows faster on one side than the other, pushing it into this curved shape so that we've got the esophagus going in at the top and then the pylorus, the opening out of the stomach at 90 degrees to that. So now we can see how the lesser omentum is going to be stretching down to the superior surface of the stomach and then behind the stomach we've got the attachment of the dorsal mesogastrium and in fact this is going to lengthen and really turn into this apron like structure so this is the greater omentum it's as though you've grabbed the dorsal mesogastrium and pulled it down and that dorsal mesogastrium is already two layers of tissue so the greater omentum actually ends up being four layers of membrane all pressed together and this membrane is epithelium that's come from mesoderm so we call it mesothelium and this greater omentum this four layers of mesothelium hangs down like an apron over the guts below it now i'm going to draw a couple of cross sections the top one is just slightly earlier than the bottom one so they're at about the same level through the center of the stomach and this is the earlier one and in orange I've shown this very thin layer of mesothelium which wraps around the organ so there's a visceral layer to it and then it wraps around the inside of the abdominal cavity so a parietal or somatic layer uh, this mesothelium will end up being the the peritoneum but also forms the mesenteries and what I really want to focus on here is the rotation of the stomach so in this diagram we're seeing the organisation of the organs at about five weeks of development, then the stomach rotates along its axis to the right, meaning that the duodenum, which was leaving the front of the stomach, is now leaving the right-hand side of the stomach. And this pulls all of those membranes into a different alignment as well. So the falciform ligament still ends up being attached to the liver at the front, but the lesser omentum ends up lying in the coronal plane, and it has a free edge on the right which ends up being an entrance into this cul-de-sac of the abdominal cavity behind the stomach that is called the lesser sac so the lesser sac of the peritoneal cavity is this space tucked in behind the stomach after it's done its rotation and it is a cul-de-sac it's blind ended because on the left hand side there's the spleen attached by its ligaments to the posterior abdominal wall there's a ligament stretching from the stomach to the spleen, so the gastrosplenic ligament or gastrolenal reflection. And then between the spleen and the posterior abdominal wall is the lenorenal ligament or reflection. The lean part of that word refers to the spleen. And the reason it's called the lenorenal ligament is because it's attaching to that posterior abdominal wall just over where the kidneys are developing and that lower image relates to about the 11th week of development. So we can see how all this shifting around that happens during embryonic and fetal development explains the relationships of the abdominal organs that we see in the adult. Now for a little bit of pancreas development. The pancreas starts off as two separate buds, a ventral bud sticking off the front of the duodenum and a dorsal bud around the back. And then that ventral bud and in fact the connection of the liver to the foregut which is still there at the common bile duct swing around the back of the duodenum so we end up seeing those connections entering into the duodenum on the inside of that curve the dorsal pancreatic bud ends up losing its connection with the duodenum and gets re-plumbed into that ventral pancreatic duct which ends up forming the definitive pancreatic duct draining into the duodenum alongside the bile duct. And the ventral pancreatic bud itself forms the unsinate process of the pancreas. As the stomach does its rotation around to the right, the duodenum is brought to lie against the posterior abdominal wall and eventually fuses with it and loses its original dorsal mesentery and the same with the pancreas as well so the pancreas which is budded off from the foregut in very much the same way as the liver did that pancreas ends up being squashed against the posterior abdominal wall and fusing with it so losing its mesentery it ends up as a retro peritoneal organ so that is it for the organs of the digestive system and 
for the spleen as well. And we will return later to look at those kidneys embedded in the posterior abdominal wall when we take a look at the development of the urogenital system. Thank you for watching Lockdown Embryology. I'll be back with more very soon. I'm going to do the respiratory system next. Thank you for watching as always. Please like, please share with anyone who you think might be interested or find this useful. Thanks again.